I grew up just a few miles from here and spent hours as a small boy peering through this fence. But today I've been invited inside the building. This is the Bailey of Bristol headquarters. Welcome to the Bailey Endeavour EV. Now the first thing to note about this camper van is it looks rather different under the bonnet. That's because this has been built on the Ford e-Transit. Bailey are one of the first UK manufacturers to build a fully electric camper van. We're going to drive it in a minute, but let's take a look and see what Bailey have done in the back. This is an all electric camper van conversion, which means no fossil fuels. So we've got water heating from an electric Truma boiler, a Thetford electric compressor fridge. We've got a two ring induction hob and an electric microwave oven and grill. We've got loads of storage throughout, a really spacious washroom as well. But one of the things that impresses me most about this project is the considerations for the environmental impact. These worktops are fully recycled. The handles here are made of recycled ocean plastic. The floor is made of corker. And above your head, Bailey have opted for a heating solution, which is the Dometic air conditioning, cooling and heating unit. Probably not gonna cut it in the winter, but I guess that's all that's available to Bailey at this point. Plus they've got some funky electrical innovations too, like an electric drop down TV. And my highlight, Alexa, play Radio 2. Playing BBC Radio 2. I have no idea. Anyway, mine just sink. But, uh, Alexa, off. You can also voice control all of the lighting in this van. Let me demonstrate. Alexa, task lights off. Okay. Alexa, general lighting to warm. Okay. But can you buy one? No, because this is a concept. So why have Bailey done this? Well, we got in discussions with Ford about the Endeavour project, um, and they mentioned that they had a number of EVs in, in the country and would be willing to partner with them in, in developing an EV capital. Right, OK. Now, obviously, you've got previous experience of building on the transit through the Adamo, the coach built, and, of course, the very recently revealed Endeavour. But what were the biggest challenges of building on an electric platform? The, the electric platform that we've got here is essentially a 4x4 transit um, and it has two floors and in right. between the floors normally is a prop shaft going to the rear axle. Um, but what Ford did for the EV vehicle is take the prop shaft out so it's a front wheel drive only and the void in between is where the battery pack is. And what challenges that present you then? Because obviously you'd normally be putting loads of fixtures and fittings, water tanks under the floor. How did you deal with that? Yeah, you're correct. We, we could put less under the floor. Um, like It hasn't got a caravan step fitted because we would have to bolt straight through a battery pack, which isn't a good idea. Um, there are some regulatory challenges. Um, we have to have an amount of low level ventilation um, in the vehicles for people to habitat it. And we have to have high level ventilation as well to get an airflow. Um, clearly, we can't just go and put vent holes in the floor. Um, because it's full of battery pack. Um, but we worked closely with our trade body, the National Caravan Council, to work out where we could put ventilation and we've actually put it in things like the footwells. Um, so there's lots of technical challenges with this and we were able to work very closely with Ford in generating their converters handbook, um, especially for EV and, and, and motorhome conversions. And when you were building it, did you take the batteries out? Because other manufacturers have had a go and they removed the batteries when it was in the factory. Did you dare to do that? No, we, we, we left them alone. Um, we, we were very interested in the Ford system as a whole because it's got an inverter fitted, which I think you know, normally they'd like builders to plug in power tools to recharge them. And we wanted to know if we could use that inverter system to power some of the 230 volt appliances in the vehicle. So we're very interested in integrating with the Ford battery pack was there, so we deliberately left it alone. Um, the two biggest challenges with, with, a, with an LPG free vehicle mm. are, are cooking and heating. Um, I, I think the heating is going to be a bit of an easier journey for the industry because the cars are already doing that. You know, Teslas now have heat pumps fitted and that's quite common in the EV sector. Um, and I think the, the suppliers to the leisure industry are looking at e um, heat pumps as a heat source. Um, you, but you fitted a leisure battery to it as well. What, what's that powering? 
Um, that's powering the lighting system, um, which is all LED, yeah. um, and, and the pump as well. Um, so, so it's using the 12 volt systems that aren't associated. So what, with but why isn't that using the EV batteries? Well, we, we can, we, we can use the EV batteries, but again, we're just doing this learning process with right. Ford into how much we can use. Because what you don't want to do is drain it all down, and then the, the customer wants to go and drive somewhere and, and found where they, they've been used all, the, all their leisure battery power. Yeah. No doubt, one of the biggest questions that you're going to get when this launches is about range. Um, how do you think the future is going to pan out for EV vehicles and camper vans? We want to go a long way and weigh a lot. How viable is this? Yeah, we're not saying the range on this vehicle is good enough. Um, clearly it isn't at the, at the moment. Um, but we want to try and understand. And I think a lot, a lot of that is asking you know, consumers are saying, what range would you like? What is acceptable? Is it 200 miles? Is it 300 miles? But it feels like that kind of ballpark to mm. me. And for the motorhoming I've done, you know, when I've driven sort of 250 miles, I'm pretty finished and happy to get into a campsite and put my feet up for a while. So is, is that reasonable? Um, and, I, and I think you know, generally that's some feedback we'd like, is, is what should we be striving for. We're still a long way though aren't we from EVs and vans becoming and camper vans especially becoming very commonplace. How far away do you think they are? I, I genuinely think yeah we, we've got a bit of a while to go there, there, there's certainly some work to do as well on, on the site infrastructure mm -hmm. um, you know, people like the caravan club have introduced sites with on pitch and on-site charging now at some of their facilities again to go on this journey of learning about the future uh, of EV motorhomes and tow cars um, um, but I think generally we, we, we've got a lot to learn about this and the infrastructure has to catch up it's a direction of travel we all, we've all got to go on mm. um, and we're pleased to just start this journey at Bailey. Simon, why have Bailey done this? Well, fundamentally, because it's the right thing to do. Um, we've got a sustainability plan. Um, we uh, carry it out a full uh, carbon footprint of our business, so a cradle to grave carbon footprint, the life of a, a motorhome or a caravan. And those figures show that over half the carbon emissions uh, in the lifetime of a motorhome are actually uh, carried out by people using their vehicle. Um, a little bit of that is, is plugging it into the mains or using the gas to, to mm. heat it up during the winter, but the vast majority is, is driving the vehicle around. So clearly looking at how the vehicle is, is powered is incredibly important and looking at alternative sources to the, the current fossil fuel vehicles is paramount um, in order to help us reach our, our carbon reduction targets. And you've got a big target set for 2050 as a business, haven't you? And I guess this is part of that, is it? Very much so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we want to be net zero by, by 2050. Um, looking at the various areas where our, our carbon emissions come from, only about 12% is actually from the operations of, of Bailey. So us, we only account for 12%. About a third is actually the energy required to make the components in the vehicle. And as I say, only half, over half, the remaining half is, is actually vehicles being used by their owners. So clearly, um, we've got to play our part in making ourselves a cleaner operation. And, and, and we've started that with um, looking at sustainable energy supply, LED lighting, solar panel provision um, um, in the buildings, that sort of thing. That's sort of the low lying fruit. That's, that's pretty easy, straightforward to do. But moving forward, we've got to start making greener products. And we can do that by, by making them lighter, and more aerodynamic and using sort of renewable materials. But fundamentally, the key is how the vehicle's powered. The, the biggest wins we're going to make in reducing our carbon footprint is by having more um, sustainably powered vehicles such as electric. Mm. This is a prototype this vehicle but when do you think we can buy one? Um, not at the NEC show in October <laughs> you can certainly see it there and we'd be really interested to, to find out what people think the, the product development team are going to be there to, to get feedback from people and what they like and perhaps what they don't like um, so please come along and have a look but fundamentally realistically we're looking about five to ten years I'd imagine before um, a fully electric EV is available for customers to buy. Now it was very interesting talking to you off camera recently. We were talking about the future of Bailey and you're obviously very future focused as a business. And what I was really struck by is your investment in the people and the talent here. We were walking back to your office and, and you said, Matt, this project is about these guys. And you pointed to the, the team that designed it, who are a young, dynamic team. Do you think it needs a project like this? to attract talent into our industry? It, it doesn't hurt. And certainly the, the, the main drive for us in terms of our sustainability planning has been from within. It's been from our younger employees who we want to know what we're doing and want to work for a company that has sustainability in mind for the future.
Chloe, you've been given free reign on this project because it's a prototype, which must have made it real fun for you. Tell me, what were the key criteria for its success? So we really wanted to push the boundaries when designing this um, vehicle because um, we, we thought it would be a good, exciting opportunity for Bailey to showcase, obviously, with the future of electric transit vehicles. It gave us the opportunity to do that. So starting with the EV layout, our original intention was to just use the Endeavour layout, but we saw an opportunity to incorporate a more playful um, modular seating area. So that's what we included. So it allows three different um, modes, a day mode, an office mode and an evening mode, um, all done by adjusting the seating modular um, to make up what you need. Um, in addition to this, we've incorporated a lot more tech into the van. We've got a CCT colour changing light system, which is electric, Alexa controlled. So a CCT, what does that stand for? Colour changing temperature. Right, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's all um, incorporated into zones as well throughout the van. Um, you've got your iPad in there as well that controls it manually. Um, and as well as that, we've obviously included a lot more um, finishes and sustainable materials. So the whip top material here, um, it's a polygood material, which is a surface material made from old refrigerators and household appliances. Hang on, it's a what material? <laughs> it's a polygood material. Polygood? Uh, polygood. <laughs> so it's used, um, it's made using 100% recycled materials. So um, old refrigerators and household appliances. Um, which is amazing because the product then you have a different kind of finish of it every time. You've got different colours coming through, which gives a really raw, unique um, palette, which is nice for the kitchen. So I want to I want to ask you about how, how you, on earth you sourced that. But the door handles and the cupboard drawer handles, tell me about those. Yes, yeah, so the handles um, are made from 100% reused ocean plastic. Um, which is amazing because they're black fittings, which is a really um, contemporary modern look, but obviously helping the environment at the same time. Um, because we wanted the, um, the van to replicate, obviously, the electric sustainable message through the materials used in the van as well. How on earth did you source those materials? So, yeah, we had completely free reign on this project, which has been amazing. Um, so we were able to look um, at not just our kind of everyday suppliers, but we looked online to source um, suppliers in the market that were using 100% recycled materials. We've also incorporated this into our flooring. We've got flooring which is made from 100% recycled corker material. And even our fabrics as well are used from 100% recycled polyester. And I love the imagery of this mood board. You've gone with a very much a relaxed rainforest, it says here, Phil. And it really does come through in everything about the van inside, doesn't it? Yeah, it portrays that sustainable message that we wanted to deliver with the product. And I think you kind of get encapsulated by that as soon as you enter the van, which is what we wanted. So Chloe, the biggest challenges in a pure EV camper van have to be, other than range, have got to be cooking and heating. Firstly, tell me about the cooking solution that this van features. Yeah, so we had to replace our current gas heated appliances in the kitchen with all electric ones. So we replaced our um, gas cooker with um, an induction hob and microwave oven grill. So right. it's completely electric. Um, and then the heating system as well. We also had to put in um, an aircon unit to replace the current um, gas heating system. Yeah, so you've gone with a roof mounted air cooling and a heating system, which yeah. people are going to say that is not going to keep me warm in November. Uh, in Britain on a campsite, let alone going to North Norway or something. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's just not, it's not there yet, is it? Um, what conversations are you having with your supply chain about the innovation we need for this solution, for heating a, a camper van? Yeah, so we're already having conversations with our suppliers in the background because um, we've already highlighted this as a potential concern when we are developing this product in the future. So having these conversations now will hopefully give us a step in the right direction for when we come to do it. Yeah. And what of these innovations do you think are viable for future Bailey projects? So there's been a lot of co additional cost um, added to this product because there's been no limitations. So mm. sourcing the materials um, has added a lot of costs because these 100% sustainable materials come obviously at a higher price. So we'll be working with our suppliers. Um, now we know what's available to us, how we can potentially source these products and just implement even one fabric out of four from a scheme just to incorporate a little bit more of a sustainable material message. Um, and then also with the lighting, we've 
taken learnings that we can replicate now into future products like this colour changing temperature system. Um, so I spit my mouth full. Yeah. <laughs> um, Go a CCT. A CCT system. Um, we've learned a lot from that that we can hopefully now roll out into future projects as well. Um, and then with, with the Alexa system, I think we'll be seeing that hopefully in the future. Um, but that's something we'll have to be working with our suppliers with um, to make it work and make it production friendly, I think. <laughs> it's a massive project, Chloe. It's really exciting. But how does it make you feel as the designer? Yeah, I think seeing the end product has been a really rewarding feeling. And I think it sends such a positive message out and really tests us about what we can actually achieve and do. Um, so it'll be really exciting to see it at the NEC in October mm. and hear the response from the public. You'd be right to observe how high the floor is in this camper van. That is, of course, because the EV batteries are under my feet. Now Bailey had to raise the floor even more with the flooring they fitted and the furniture fixings that are on it, but not at the expense of head height. This was something Bailey were particularly aware of. In fact, I'm five foot 10 and there's a good several inches above my head. There are no seat belts back here because this is a two berth camper van, but I can see how this layout would work really well for daytime, for working. Let me show you what nighttime would look like. I'll be honest, I prefer a fixed bed. You might be wondering, is the motorhome being powered by the EV batteries? No, it's not. At the moment, Bailey and Ford continue to collaborate on these systems and how they can make that happen. So at the moment, there's a leisure battery and there's a 240 volt hookup point and the batteries in the floor just run the drivetrain. It looks fantastic. Let's see how it drives. It's not hanging back, does it? That's brilliant. Well, I have to say, the first thing you'll note about driving any EV is it's automatic. It just has forward and backward gears. Uh, there's no gearbox at all. Um, the driving position in this e-transit is really good. It's really comfortable. Loads of information without unpacking a, a transit van in detail. We've got a battery power monitor, obviously no rev counter as such. We've got the speedo, battery levels, brilliant. Um, on board a screen here, um, lots of information to hand. That's worth noting too that these front cab seats don't spin. So this e-transit was homologated for rotating cab seats two weeks after it was built. So any future production model would have a rotating cab seats. It weighs three and a half ton, uh, but so you can drive on a normal car license, but the payload with all the EV batteries is only 178 kilos, which is not really enough. So Bailey have said, if they were putting this model into production, they would build it on the 3.9 ton 4D Transit, giving you a much bigger and more realistic payload. But of course you would have to have a C1 driving license. Now, the question I'm sure you're all asking is, what's the range? How far will I go? Well, when we started out, it said 141 miles. But Ford reckon uh, that with the weight of the Bailey conversion, it probably is 108 miles, which it's not really enough, is it? You're not going to get very far on a holiday in that time. And that's why this is a prototype. Uh, future technology will undoubtedly come. If this is going to be five, 10 years away, perhaps sodium batteries by then will be a reality, which will give us a much greater range and of course weigh a lot less too. It takes 35 minutes to recharge up to 80% on a fast DC charger and just over eight hours to get to 100% on an AC charger. This is a huge issue that needs addressing. CPOs, charge point operators, make your spaces bigger. This is not a big e-van. Look how much it hangs out of the space. It's great 
to see this innovation and particularly to see a British manufacturer pioneering in this way. But it's not perfect, is it? The range certainly isn't there yet. We need more innovation, particularly around things like heating. A roof mounted air conditioning, cooling and heating unit just isn't gonna cut it all year round. And a lot of the features on this e-camper are just not viable for mass production. Look at the external graphics, for example, they took over a week to apply, but they do look awesome. Overall, I'm impressed and encouraged. This concept shows a willingness by Bailey to take risks and innovate, something the motorhome industry definitely needs. We need our industry leaders to revolutionise and attract fresh, young, new talent to our industry and our niche. So you can't buy one, but keep an eye on what Bailey do next. This is an exciting time for the industry. I have no doubt we will soon see other manufacturers follow suit, taking risks, getting creative and creating products that are meaningful and future-proof. The Endeavour EV and the Diesel Endeavour will both be launched at the Motorhome and Campervan Show in October 2023 at the NEC in Birmingham. Thanks for watching.